Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are really uh, excited to be out in San Ramon, California at the GE Software Center, talking to Bill Rue, the VP of GE Software. Exciting announcement came out last week about the new Predix Cloud. We've been out here a couple times, so thanks for having us out again, Bill. Thanks, Jeff, glad to have you here. Absolutely, so why don't you give us an update on, on the center and how you guys are growing. You know, it's a crazy time to hire people and you don't seem to be having a problem with that. Well, it's always a challenge to hire people. Uh, but with that said, I think we got a great value proposition because we believe that we're creating like this next, the next thing, right? The industrial internet of things. And if you think about that idea, we're in, the, in connecting really important things, that's the industrial world, uh, and then be able to take that data and be able to do things no one's ever done before with them. And now with the Predix announcement of the cloud, we can do it at a speed and scale globally that no one could do before. So for us, the idea of people joining is they get to work on really big important machines, really big important problems, the next generation technology, who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah, well, and just the scale of everything that you guys touch is so large that these you know, kind of marginal improvements on efficiency, on savings, on here and there, you know, result in massive amounts of, of savings and value creation. Yeah, I mean, one quick example is in a wind farm, with software, we can uh, generate 5% more electricity on a, on a wind turbine. That equals 20% more profit for the customer. So that's a, that's a huge gain. Uh, and you can see that in every industry. One, two, three, four, five percent right. changes are, uh, have amazing impact. Big numbers. So let's talk about Predix Cloud. What is Predix Cloud? Why are you so excited about it? Give us kind of the, uh, the 411 and we'll dive into it. Yeah, I know, you know, for us, the idea of speed and flexibility is really important. We think that um, that's how people are going to compete. So how fast can I connect the machine? How fast can I get the data? Uh, you know, how fast can I deliver uh, outcomes uh, to, my, uh, to my field or my, the people who are doing the work? I mean, that's really what it's all about. So for us, we, we've looked at what everyone has done in the cloud uh, has been able to accomplish on the consumer side right. and said, we want that same speed and scale for the industrial world. Right. And the only thing we have to do is then add things like security in a different way. We have to think about different kinds of data because they don't deal with the same kind of large data we deal in healthcare, et cetera. So it's optimized for industrial, but built with exactly the same concept of speed and scale that the consumer world has done so well. Right, so a lot of the, the cloud attributes that people love so much, right, is it's flexible, you know, it's on demand, um, it's connected and, and, and always available. There's storage, there's compute. So are you guys offering all those? Is there kind of a specific subset of, of kind of classic cloud functions that this offers? Is it just a better place to store? Is it a better place to connect? Is it a better place to share? Or is it a better place to do analytics? What are kind of the classic cloud attributes uh, does Predix offer its customers? Well, we're building on, on the shoulders of giants. So we're, we're certainly able to run uh, uh, today we can run on Amazon, but we, we are also working with other companies to build cloud centers globally because nobody has a global footprint. So you can't go to somebody and say, give me, give me a cloud. You in fact have to build it yourself. The second right, thing right. is if you look at what we're adding value on, it's a couple of things. One is connectivity. How you connect to big important machines are very different than, than consumer devices. Security's different, real time is different, lots of things there that we're working on. The second thing is we deal with data types, like take uh, uh, imaging in healthcare. Those are big, big images. So how do you deal with those images in real time uh, in the cloud? We've dealt with that. Then we add in the idea of specialized analytics that are aimed at the ideas of zero unscheduled downtime, or you know, how do you manage a fleet, so on, at the cloud level. So for us, it's really a platform capability in the cloud for industrial connectivity and building these analytic-based applications. And then we're riding on infrastructure being, being built globally. So as an example, we'll also partner with China Telecom and build cloud capability on top of what they built. So everywhere we go in the world, we're going to find people to work with and we're going to be at that higher level. Okay, and, and is it a, a necessary requirement that uh, my company and my industrial things have some interchange with, with your world or can I operate 
my industry and my analytics independently of being connected to a GE device or service? It's, uh, it has to be independent. In fact, that's what we've said. We will work with anybody. We'll work with our competitors, and we are, and we'll work with uh, our customers. Uh, obviously, we want to make GE machines the best in the world, and right, we're going right, to stay focused right. on that. But with that said, I'll give a great example. We've, uh, we're working with Pitney Bowes, who they're not a traditional customer. They built mailing and big mailing and sorting machines. Uh, and so this is an example of, of, of partnering with somebody who does a different kind of business, allowing them to go win in that world using the Predix cloud. And that's what we're going to do with Pitney Bowes. Right. And, um, and in terms of kind of looking down the road, services that you might offer, you know, we look at Amazon, we were just in Seattle, it's kind of the, the ground center, if you will, of this creation of cloud and kind of the growth yeah. of the cloud and really the forcing of, uh, of cloud into the enterprise, uh, good for them. But you know, their uh, offerings have changed over time and they continue to add more. I can imagine with all the, the analytics capabilities you have and also this whole concept of one plus one makes three in a solution approach and an integrated approach, which is why you have one software center and all your business units tied together. Will those be types of services that other industries can potentially leverage inside the, the cloud? Yeah, I think that we, we imagine that we'll have services that we'll provide, but we also are working with others to provide uh, services on the cloud. And I think because we're Cloud Foundry based, which is this open source capability, um, anybody can build microservices and we will enable their microservice to work with ours. So as a result, it's both, we'll provide capability that's best in class for industrial asset performance management, but we're going to allow others to build any kind of capability. And the beauty of it is, is that that builds an ecosystem for the industrial world. The idea of an industrial marketplace is what we envision this eventually turns into. And we'll build the best things we can, but we think the only way the industrial world wins is, is as a whole we enable an ecosystem. Because the consumer world has done this so well, we admire that, how can we do it on the industrial right, side? Right, and talk a little bit about the role of open source. G's been around a long time, you've built a proprietary <laughs> big things for a long time, you've probably been yeah. operating on your own system for a long time, and now the world is changing, right? Open source is a very different way to drive innovation, it's a very different way to grow uh, software. Talk about uh, open source in GE and how important it is and how you guys are leveraging open source. This, this is a great question, Jeff, because when I got here, I'd say it wasn't, it wasn't in the DNA to do open source here. But the fact is if, is, if you look at the way the best companies in the world are beginning to create their own platforms for their businesses, open source plays a key role in it. So we moved in that direction and we did in, and, and not just open source, open source standards, collaboration, so uh, we work with Cloud Foundry. We help to create uh, the, the, the Cloud Foundry open source capability. We're a member of that. That's right. So creating new ones. We have embraced a lot of open source in the Predix platform uh, and then added value on top of it like everybody else. We created the Industrial Linux Consortium to look to standardization and how do you make everybody's products work together and, may, and maybe uh, have a way to certify things. So you think about all of that, we've done all of those things, not in the DNA yesterday, but certainly in the DNA today. Right, right, and you got all kinds of fun and interesting projects going on. I guess it's downstairs, downstairs. where we were earlier. They never let me down there because uh, they are so creative down there, you know, they don't want to be bothered. But yeah. a lot of great things going on. And the beauty of the open source and what we're doing at the platform is it, groups can independently create value and then put it in, and then everybody can leverage it. So different style of work here right. in the digital world for GE. And really, you know, the, the kind of the classic conundrum for a platform play, right, is nobody buys platforms, right? They buy applications. Yeah. But, you know, can you build an application? Can you go to market really as a platform under the covers that you're disguising as an application? You guys already have applications. You already have yeah. a, big, a, a big book of business. So now you are basically leveraging building a platform almost underlay to support those various businesses using software and cloud. You know, the, wor the, the world of platforms is changing and in many ways, we are building an application that happens to be a platform. Right. I think this is the way the world is going, is that because of APIs and because of the way the technology is going, is nobody builds this monolithic app anymore. And we are building, think of it, as asset performance management and analytics as the capability. Well, those are, in many ways, applications. But the way we do that is delivering it rather than as a monolithic 
uh, here you go kind of capability is delivering it in a framework that you can pick and choose those and then customize it to your own needs. That is a different way to build applications. That's always been the promise, right, of APIs right, and right, the API services. Economy. Well, we're finally at a point where that works. So now there's two faces to an app. You can have the app or you can have the platform app that allows you to create these things at a faster rate and tailor them to your needs. We're finally at a point where at the second one. The promise can be delivered today, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, pretty exciting. So I'm going to shift I, uh, gears on you a little bit. So we're, we're in your office. We got all the, the, uh, the requisite hard hats and airplanes and turbines yes. and stuff. But more importantly, we have Lucille Ball up on the wall in, in the classic the classic shot when she's working at the candy factory. Yeah. So what's the significance of, uh, of Lucille up there and one of the classic gags of all time? You know, when, when I first started here, it was me and my assistant, uh, and this only goes back about three years ago, and now we're about 1,200 people here. And as people came in, you know, you're, you're, you, when you grow from zero to 1,200 here and you integrate it with 10,000 more of your friends globally in GE, it's a pretty complex environment <laughs> we, we live in. The second thing is, I have to say, the executives of the company, you know, they, they get behind this in a big way, but they expect you to go fast. And so uh, what I always tell my employees, I put them there to remind them that all of us are often going to feel that we're, we're like that, we're overwhelmed. That, you know, the chocolates are coming f sometimes faster. And, um, and you got to know when to tell the boss sometimes, uh, that, every, that everything has got to slow down a bit. <laughs> Otherwise, they go, speed it up! You know, so I always remind people that we're always going to move fast. Speed is everything, but we also have to be able to know when to, to slow down a bit. So I love that scene because it's a great management uh, technique to learn uh, you know, when to tell your boss that uh, you know, it's time to, to focus a little bit. Yes, yes. I, I thought you were going to say it was uh, moving to your next point of failure, right? There's always yes. another point of failure, no matter yeah. how you optimize <laughs> the systems. Well, Bill, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your time uh, to let us stop by and, and, and really get the update on Predix. It sounds like exciting times, and I don't know how many people you're going to have next time we come out to visit. Well, thanks, Jeff. I'll let you talk to half of them when we come next Absolutely. Time. All right. Well, Bill Root, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the GE Software Center in San Ramon, California. We'll see you next time.